Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Bob DiMaria, and we are going to have a lot of fun tonight because guess what we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about men's health. You know, if you're going to have some questions during the program, if you'd like, why don't you post them on our Facebook page later on, and I'll do my very best to get back with you as soon as I can, and we'll answer every question that's logical, if you know what I'm saying. Don't ask a lot of really specific questions about your own health. But let's get right into it. Let's talk about men's health. You know, quite interesting, it was recently in the Wall Street Journal, they had an article about the middle-aged health challenge, and it happened to be, and if you look really close right here, it's about the liver. It's a fatty liver. And in our practice, we see and are seeing an epidemic of fatty livers. You might say, what does that have to do with men's health? Well, the liver is a very important organ. As you know, in the human body, this happens to be a liver that is normal, a fatty liver, and someone who drinks a lot of alcohol, maybe takes a lot of medication, this is what cirrhosis of the liver would look like. And if I turn the liver around, here's where the gallbladder is at. The gallbladder is much like the reservoir of a dish detergent in your body. The gallbladder helps emulsify fat. Why am I so concerned about the liver? Because as a male, we're exposed to a lot of estrogen. I know that some of you right now golf on a regular basis. And I don't have anything against golfing. I think golfing is tremendous. But you know, when you go on the golf course, you're walking on grass that's been sprayed with herbicides and pesticides. So this is a trick question. Is it healthier to go golfing on a sunny Sunday afternoon, driving the cart, or early in the morning with your buddies at 6 o'clock and walking with your golf cart? You know what the answer is? You're better off to go golfing on a sunny Sunday afternoon or any afternoon. I'm just using Sunday as an example. And the reason is, is that the sun rays are getting rid of the dew. You see, when they spray the yards, when they spray the golf course with herbicides and pesticides, you're walking on it. And when you walk on it, you're being exposed to estrogen. So you can see this happens to be an organic lawn uh, company. They spray where we live in the area. They apply applications that are organic in nature. The biggest challenge right now that I want to pass on to men more than anything else that I'm going to talk about tonight is that men are exposed to excessive estrogen in the water you drink, the non-organic food that you eat, walking on fairways, even in the air that you breathe. And here's the issue, gentlemen. We have the ability to process estrogen, but we're being exposed to so much estrogen right now that our bodies can't process it adequately and guess what it results in? An enlarged prostate. You do not want an enlarged prostate because when you have an enlarged prostate, what happens is you're going to get up multiple times during the evening or between 10 o'clock when you should go to bed and 6 o'clock in the morning and you're going to have to go to the bathroom. And that could happen three or four or five times a night. And so you don't want that to happen. You want restful, peaceful sleep. Well, unfortunately, if your prostate gets enlarged and your urine's impeded, they might have to do a procedure to you, which is not really pleasant. Literally, rotor root your, through your penis through the prostate gland so that enlargement will shrink down. But it's only a temporary fix. I am telling you right now, estrogen is the issue that men have to deal with. The very best food for men to consume is broccoli. Broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower. But broccoli by far is numero uno, and the broccoli, what it's going to do, it's going to help your body process estrogen. Finished with that point. Let's talk about a couple other items here. This happens to be five pounds of fat. It literally is five pounds, not necessarily fat per se. It's, it's fake fat. But for every pound that you are overweight, it adds 200 miles of extra blood vessels. I'll say that again be a good uh, test question, by the way. For every pound of fat, that's 200 miles of extra blood vessels. So your heart is located right here. Your heart 
has to push blood through your whole body. Well, if you happen to have a large abdomen, your heart has to push blood through that, and you have a greater potential for your blood pressure to go up. But you know what else about this belly fat that's really an issue? Belly fat can make estrogen also. You don't want excessive estrogen in your body because you know what? It can create man boobs, that's right, large breasted men, and men can get breast cancer by the way, but it, once again it's going to go back to it's going to impact your prostate gland, which you don't want to have happen to you. So I'm going to shift gears for a moment. I have a very interesting model right here. This happens to be what we call the sympathetic nervous system. So your brain is located here, and off your brain is your spinal cord, and your spinal cord send messages to nerves. So in the man, the alignment in this area right here impacts the function for you as far as having intimacy with your mate. Because in my book, Dr. Bob's Guide, Men's Health, The Basics, we talk about erectile dysfunction. It is a huge problem today. You can watch television. They're always trying to sell you some kind of a medication to obtain and maintain and sustain an erection. You know, I've been practicing since 1978. And when I was going to college way back in the 1970s, I never thought I'd be first being on a Facebook Live talking about erectile dysfunction. It is a very common problem. 40% of the men in our society today, over 40 years old, have difficulties obtaining, maintaining, and sustaining an erection. You're going to say, Dr. Bob, what are you talking about? You remember I was talking about excessive estrogen? So I'm saving the very best for right now. If you have too much estrogen in your body, you're going to have low T. Low T means low testosterone. You're going to be passive. You're not going to want to do anything. You're just going to hang out and be kind of very not fun to be around. Men should have a lot of energy and be very vibrant and very happy and promoting and be a part of their relationship. Well, you need testosterone for that. But I want to look really close here because I have a degree in spinal engineering and we take films of people, our patients, digital films. If you have an alignment issue in the lower part of your spine and if you have been everywhere and nobody's been able to help you, you may have a subluxation putting pressure on nerves that go to your male organs. You hear what I just said? That means you may have difficulty obtaining and maintaining an erection. Number one, too much estrogen. Number two, having poor nervous system function. So you may consider even coming to see us or find a chiropractor in your area and have them do an assessment to you. Now, this is very interesting. This happens to be a dipstick. You know, all of you that are watching me right now, why don't you send me some hearts and some loves and some thumbs up it's because I just know that you're fully loving and appreciating what's going on right now. This, for all of you that are 35 years old and younger, this happens to be a dipstick. Now, a dipstick is what we put inside of an engine to evaluate the amount of oil that you have inside of your engine. So this is a dipstick. Now, what's kind of fascinating is that we actually have a tool today called the Essential Fatty Acid Blood Spot Test. And that Essential Fatty Acid Blood Spot Test is a way for us to evaluate the oil inside of your body. Now, hormonally, you would like to make sure that you have enough omega-3 fats because omega-3 fats take away inflammation. Omega-6 fats cause inflammation. What are examples of omega-6 fats? Safflower oil, sunflower oil, corn oil. Those cause inflammation. Very common in snack foods. So if you happen to be someone that enjoys cons constantly consuming snack foods that have safflower oil in it, sunflower oil, and I'm telling you also in salad dressings, you could have inflammation in your body you're going to go to see your well-meaning health care provider and he's going to want to put you on a drug to thin your blood and so you're not going to have a stroke or a heart attack. What you want to do is you may consider doing an essential fatty acid blood spot test. Really a good idea, by the way. And if not, make sure that you're taking and using some omega-3 fats. We use those that are sourced from anchovies and sardines. They're smaller fish. It's less toxic. 
Just because you go to a store and you're buying an oil doesn't necessarily mean that it's not toxic. There's a lot of fish oils today that you don't want to be putting inside of your body. Flax oil is a good idea, but you also want to make sure, see flax oil is an omega-3. If you're taking just flax oil, you want to make sure that you're having enough vitamin B6 because your body loses out on B6 when you're consuming just flax oil. So I'm going to talk about cholesterol for a moment. Is that okay? I know that it is because cholesterol is a real issue and I know a lot of you watching me right now, I have this conversation every day with uh, men that go to well-meaning physicians and they want to put them on a cholesterol drug. I don't think that having that level at 200 and then if it's 201 or 205, they have to immediately put you on a statin drug. You want to have a full profile done. You want to have cholesterol and you want to have your HDL cholesterol. Your HDL cholesterol is the one that they call the good cholesterol. But to me, the HDL cholesterol, when it's high or above the normal range, that means you're exercising. Exercising is probably the very best way to improve your HDL and or your good cholesterol. The LDL, which is considered the bad cholesterol, if it's elevated, tells me your body has oxidation. And that's one of the reasons you want to be taking an oil. And the best thing to do, as I mentioned to you just a moment ago, is a dipstick, the essential fatty acid blood spot test. Now, I'm going to give you a rough rule of thumb right now. So you might want to write this down. Okay, here we go. If your cholesterol is elevated and your triglycerides are normal, triglycerides are blood fat, by the way, that means that you probably have high cholesterol because of stress. I will say that again. If your cholesterol is elevated and your triglycerides are normal, your cholesterol is probably elevated because of stress. That's very important, and I talk about that in Dr. Bob's uh, men's book, The Basics. Okay, Dr. Bob's men's book, The Basics. Now, here's the next thing. If your cholesterol is elevated and your triglycerides are elevated, that's coming from a poor diet. Now, it's not from dairy necessarily or red meat. You know what it really is from? It's from sugar. It's from sugar and it's from omega-6 fats. Let me tell you something here. So I'm going to give you this imaginary graph that's in front of me right now. Cholesterol becomes something in your body called pregnenolone. Pregnenolone becomes progesterone. Progesterone goes to become cortisone in your body. Now, Cholesterol becomes pregnenolone. Pregnenolone becomes progesterone. It's over here. Now, progesterone has to make a choice. Does it go on to make cortisone or does it go over to make testosterone? Hear what I just said? I'm going to say this again. Cholesterol becomes pregnenolone. Pregnenolone becomes progesterone. Progesterone has to make a choice. Is it used to make more cortisone or does it go over to make testosterone? You can say, Dr. Bob, so what are you getting at? When your cortisone is low, there's something called a glucocorticoid. See, when you eat sugar, sugar makes your body cannibalize cortisol. So your brain needs to say to the rest of the body, hey, listen, I'm going to make cholesterol and you're going to make, I'm going to make progesterone. But instead of going over hello and making testosterone, sorry down there, penis, that you're not going to have enough testosterone to get obtain, maintain an erection. You got where I'm coming from? So sugar can literally cannibalize, or I'm sorry, stress and sugar can cannibalize the cortisol that's inside of your body. And this whole cascade continues on. And you don't want this cascade because your body is going to be totally exhausted. You know, I don't promote soy for men either. I, I don't think anybody should eat soy. Um, soy usually comes from genetically modified seeds. It's high in aluminum, it takes zinc out of your body, it just creates a lot of distress. I don't promote soy. You wouldn't say, what's the option to that? Kale. Kale is a great source of minerals, it's a great source of protein. I eat kale every day. I have some in the refrigerator that I'm going to be cutting up for tomorrow for our dinner that I'm going to saute with some cabbage and some onions and some shredded carrots. Basically, I eat a vegetable and protein type of diet. So gentlemen, I gave you a few 
tips. I'm going to give you this one last one right now because I know a lot of you watching me are on some type of blood pressure medication. And this is what I've learned. We've already talked about being overweight because you don't want to have that excessive weight because that's going to put stress on your heart. But what I have learned, besides being overweight and not drinking enough water, one of the leading causes of high blood pressure is not enough magnesium. Not enough magnesium. Magnesium comes from eating green food. Anything green, kale, romaine lettuce, broccoli, cabbage, anything green is a source of magnesium. This was a lot of condensed information in a very, very short time period. Please pass this on. I know it will make a difference for all the men in the world. Thank you so much. I'm Dr. Bob DiMaria.